Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design a striking Divi product layout with image perspective and colorful abstract waves. So this is the final design we're aiming to achieve in today's tutorial. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, let's go through the things we're going to need in order for us to achieve this design. So first of all, we're going to be using Divi. And then at a later stage, we're going to be using elements from the software marketing landing page from within the Divi Builder. So first of all, let's start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages and click on Add New. So let's call this page Layout. But of course, you can use any name for this page. Next, I'm going to click on Use the Divi Builder. And then I'm going to go into the Visual Builder. So the first thing we want to do here is to create a full width header. So I'm going to come over here and just hover over my sections, click this plus button, and then I'm going to click on full width. So over here, I need to select the full width header. So I'm going to select it right here like that. So for now, I'm just going to save this. And then I am going to come over here to the top and delete this section that we have right here. So now we are left with the full width header. So before we start adding all the header content, let's start off by adding our background colors. So I'm just going to come over here again and then just go into my section settings, click on background, and then I'm going to start off by adding my gradient colors. So I'm going to click the second tab because this is where we get all our gradient options. So I'm going to click the plus button here, click on the first color. Now this color here is going to be an RGBA value, which has a bit of transparency. So in order for us to get those values here, because by default here, you can see we have the hexadecimal values. So I'm just going to drag the slider down a bit, and then I'm going to come within these brackets and paste my color like that. Now, if you want to use these same colors as I'm using in this tutorial, you can actually go to our post, which I'm going to link to in the show notes below. Next, I'm going to choose my second color, drag the slider again, and then I'm going to paste my value within those brackets. And then over here, we want to make sure we select where it says place gradient above image. Set that to yes. Okay, so now that we have our gradient colors all set, the next thing is to do is to add our image. So I'm going to click this third tab right here, click the plus button, and then I'm going to upload my image. Click on select files. And then my image is right here at the top. Great, so now I can go ahead and upload an image. So you can see here that my image is right there in the background. We are going to be adding some padding and adding all more elements in here so that you can uh, really see the full picture. But um, just from using this little preview here, we can see that the image is in the background right there. The next step now is to add some padding to our section. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on spacing, and I'm going to add a padding of 80 pixels to the bottom and then zero to the top right and left. Next, we're going to come over here to the box shadow. And then I'm going to choose this one right here. Now the settings that we're going to use are going to be as follows. The box shadow vertical position is going to be minus 200 pixels. Next, I'm going to choose my shadow color. I'm going to make sure that this is set to white like that. And then finally, over here on the box shadow position, I'm going to make sure that this is set to inner shadow like that. Now, right now, as we can see in our visual preview, it seems like everything has disappeared, but don't worry because we are going to make sure that everything is in place soon. Now it's time to save. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our full width header module settings. So I'm going to click the uh, module settings icon. So I'm going to start off by adding my subheading text. And this is just dummy text I'm using right here, but uh, you can use specific text that you may need for this page. So next I'm going to add my title and my title is just going to be our product. Next we're going to come over here to our button one text. We're going to add uh, just text which says download now. And then for the button two, we're just going to call this by license like that. Okay, so next we're going to insert our logo image URL. So I'm going to come over here to images. Okay, so the logo that we're going to add needs to be white because we have a dark background. So I'm going to come over here and click upload select files, and then my logo is right here. Ideally, the size of the logo or the image that you're going to be using for this needs to be 100 by 100 pixels. So I'm going to click upload an image. So now we can see that our logo has been added onto our site. Great. Now, as you can see, 
our design is aligned left. So we need to make sure that everything is aligned centered. So I'm going to come over here to design and then I'm going to click on layout and center the design. Now, of course, we can see the color here is not uh, easy to read because it's dark on a dark background. So we need to change this. So I'm going to come over here to text and then change my text color from dark to light. So now we can read everything, which is great. Now it's time to uh, change our title font. So I'm going to come over here to title text. So first of all, I'm going to change my title font to Poppins. So I'm going to search for it. And then over here for the font weight, I'm going to set this to light. Now let's come over here to the size and make it bigger. So we're going to set this to about 65 pixels. And this is for the desktop, but it's a good idea that we might as well go in and set our sizes for the smartphone. So I'm going to click this little icon right here and I'm going to click on smartphone and set this to about 40. And then next I'm going to come to the line height and set this to 1.5. So that just gives this enough uh, space between all the elements on our page. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the desktop view. Now it's time to set the subhead text. So I'm going to come over here to subhead text. As we did before, we're going to make sure that the font is consistent with what we have here on the heading. So I'm going to click here and select Poppins. So the font weight is fine as regular, but we're going to change the size to about 20. And then finally, we're going to come over here to the line height and set it to 1.5. So the next stage now is to customize our buttons. So I'm going to click header two. So by activating use custom styles for button, this allows us to add all our settings for our button. So the first thing we're going to do is to start off by adding our background color. So I'm going to click here, paste my hexadecimal value in here like that. So as you can see, uh, the color has been updated straight away here on my visual editor. Okay, so next we are going to add our border width. So our border width, we don't really need anything here. So let's just set this to zero. Now for the border radius, we're going to set this to about 50. So you can see here as I am uh, increasing the size, the shape of the button is actually changing, which is exactly what we need here. And then next we're going to go to our button letter spacing and we're going to set this to one. And our default font for button two needs to be set to Poppins. Okay, so let's save this for now. And now it's time to work on button one. So I'm going to go back in here, click on design. And then I'm going to click on button one, use custom styles for button as we did before. And I'm going to start off by adding my background color. And I'm going to click here. In fact, I need to click here on button one background color and paste my hexadecimal value right there. Great. So the next stage now is to do as we did before with the button two. And this is to change our button border width to zero. And then over here, for our button border radius, we're going to set this to 50. Letter spacing, we're going to set this to 1. And then for our font, we're going to set this to Poppins. Now, as we can see with our designs here, those two buttons are actually different in size because the size is determined by the amount of text that's in the button. So we would like a consistent layout. So in order for us to achieve this, we are going to use some CSS code which will make these buttons the same size. So let's come over here to the advanced tab. And then I'm going to come over here to custom CSS. And then we need to look for button one. So it's right here. I'm going to paste my CSS code just like that. And then for button two, we need to do the same. And now we can see that the buttons are exactly the same size. Now, if you want to use this code again, it's on our post, which I will link to in the show notes below. Okay. So we're done now with the header settings. I'm going to go ahead now and save. Okay, so now that we have all our buttons in place, the next stage now is to add our full width image. So for this, we're going to add a full width module. So I'm going to click this plus button here, click on full width. And then I'm going to search for my full width image module. I'm going to select it, click upload, upload files. Now my image that I need is on my desktop. So I'm going to navigate to my desktop, select it. And then I'm going to click upload an image. So as you can see, this is just an image of a screenshot that I took from, from the DV Backend Builder. Now we need to update some design settings. So I'm going to click here on Design, Sizing. So we're going to set this to about 35% for the desktop. And then we need also need to add 
the sizes for the tablet and smartphone. So I'm going to click this little button here, click on tablet, and we're going to set the tablet at 60% and the smartphone at 70%. Great. Now we need to make sure this is the line centered. So I'm going to click this little icon here to center everything. Click on desktop so we can view everything. Now it's time to add our box shadow. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow. And the option that we need here is this one right here with the shadow on the bottom like that. And then we're going to add some adjustments to our vertical blur and spread. So let's start off with the box shadow vertical position. So we are going to set up this to be about 29. The blur strength needs to be set to 72 pixels. And then the box shadow strength needs to be set to minus 21 pixels. And then finally, we need to add our shadow color, which I will do by pressing this little icon here. And then I'm going to add my hexadecimal value. So to do that, I'm just going to make sure my sliders don't show any transparency because as you can see here, as soon as we add some transparency, this turns into an RGBA option. So we want to make sure that this is set to hexadecimal. I'm going to paste my colors in here. So what we need to do now is we need to turn this image into 3D space. Now to do that, we have some custom code again, which is on our post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So let's go ahead and do that. So this code here needs to be added as CSS code. So I'm going to click the advanced tab over here, click on custom CSS, and we want this CSS to be on the main element, which is the image. So I'm going to paste it. And now we can see that our image has been transformed into 3D space, which is awesome. So for now, let's go ahead and save. So I'm going to save this. Next, we're going to add a regular section. So I'm going to click this plus button here, click on regular. So this is the section that's going to have our abstract multicolored wave divider. Okay, so in this case here, we don't need the row. So we need to go ahead and delete it if you haven't, um, if you've already added it. So now I'm going to go into my section settings, click on design, and we need to go into the dividers. So I'm going to click on dividers and we're going to start off with the divider at the bottom. So I'm going to click here on bottom. So let's choose our style. So the style I'm going to go with is this wavy one. So I'm just going to scroll down and it's this one right here. I'm going to select it. Next, we need to add our RGBA color. So I'm going to click here on the divider color, drag down the slider because the value we're going to add here is an RGBA value. So I'm going to paste my values in here within the brackets like that and we can see straight away our color has been transformed and it's looking really nice now it's time to add our divider height because right now you can see it's quite low so let's increase this to about 157 and then over here on the divider horizontal repeat i'm going to set this to two now let's add some margins to this so i'm going to come over here to spacing and then i'm going to add my custom margin top of 230 pixels so the reason why we're adding this mar uh, this margin is because we don't want this uh, wave to be so close to our product right here. So we need to give it some breathing space. And then for the custom padding, we're just going to add zeros throughout because we don't need any padding on this. Okay, so I think we're done with this. Let's go ahead and save. Now it's time to add the divider to the top. So to do this, we're going to add another section. So in fact, uh, I can just duplicate this because I don't want to go through all the steps again and add all these uh, settings. So I'm going to duplicate the section and then I'm going to go into the section settings, click on design, dividers, and this time we need divider top. So let's start off by choosing our style, which of course is similar to what we uh, chose earlier, which is this one right here. Our horizontal repeat needs to be set at 2x. Right, so what we're going to do next is to add our divider height. So I'm going to set this to about 127, add my divider color. So again, this is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to make sure that I add my values between the brackets like that. And then we're going to come over here to our spacing and the custom padding is fine as it is. So next, we're going to add another divider. So we're going to add a new section as we did before. Go into the section settings, design, and then I'm going to come to dividers. And this time I'm going to go to design a bottom, choose our style. We're going to set this to about 181. We're going to select our divider color. And again, it's going to be an RGBA value. I'm going to place my value between the, between the brackets like that. Now, what we need to do here is to flip this horizontal like that. So we need to add one more section of dividers. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. 
And then I'm going to come to the bottom here, click this plus button, click on regular, close this, and then I'm going to go into my section settings, click on design, dividers, and this time we're going to add divider top. We're going to choose our style, and it's right here. Now we're going to add our color, so I'm going to click here on the color area. It's an RGBA value, so I'm going to paste all my values within the brackets like that. Adjust my height to about 119. We're going to flip this horizontal. And then we're going to come over here to the custom padding and add zeros throughout. So again, I'm going to just add 0, 0, 0, and 0. Okay, now it's time to add our fourth divider. So I'm going to save this for now. And then I'm going to click this plus button here to add our section. Click on regular. And then I'm going to go to my section settings. Click on design, dividers. And this is going to be divider top. I'm going to choose my style. So this is going to be my style. I want to add my color. Right, so this time for the divider height, we're going to set this to about 185. And then the repeat, we're going to set it to 2x. And then we're going to flip this like that. Now let's go on uh, and adjust our spacing. So I'm going to come over here, click on spacing. And we're going to add a custom margin of 400 to the bottom. So we can give this wave enough breathing space and then I'm going to come over here to our custom padding and add zeros throughout. So here's the final result but what you could do is you can go in and make some adjustments and make this wave look the way you want it to look. So for now I'm going to go ahead and save. Now it's time to import our software landing page layout. So I'm going to click this plus button here. So I'm going to scroll down and this is the software layout pack and the layout that we need is the landing page. So I'm going to select it and make sure you don't select replace existing content because all the work that we've done up to this stage will disappear. So just make sure that you don't make that mistake. Now you're going to click on use this layout. So now this layout is going to be imported onto this page right at the bottom of our design. Okay, so let's confirm that that has happened. So if I scroll down here, you can see that this is our layout right at the bottom there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to delete the first section because we don't need this section right here. So we're going to get rid of it. And I think we might as well delete this as well because we don't need that. Great. So now I'm just going to do some final adjustments to our design. Right, so we can see here that I've added a section instead of adding a full width image module below our product. So I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to come over here and click this plus button and add our full width image like that. Now I'm going to click upload and then I'm going to select my image right here. Click upload now and now we can see that our image has been uploaded. The next stage now is to set the sizes of our image. So I'm going to come over here to design, click on sizing and then for the desktop I'm going to set this to 35% like that. We're going to make sure that this is centered and then we might as well just go in and add the different sizes for the tablet and also for the smartphone. So for the tablet, we're going to set this to about 60% and for the smartphone, we're going to set it to 70%. Okay, let's go back to our desktop view. Now let's add some shadows to our image. So I'm going to click here on a box shadow and the shadow we're going to go for is this one right here. I'm going to select it. So you can see that it's just added a bit of a shadow below our image. But we're not done yet because we still need to go in and add our settings. So we're going to start off here with the vertical position. So the vertical position needs to be set at 29, the blur strength at 72, and the shadow spread strength at minus 21 pixels. And then finally, we are going to add our color. So our shadow color here is going to be a hexadecimal value. So I'm just going to go in and paste it in here like that. Okay, so we want our image now to be transformed into 3D space. So in order for us to do this, we're going to use some custom CSS code, which is on our post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So let's go ahead and add our CSS code. So I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab, click on custom CSS, and in, make sure that you enter this CSS code on the main element. So I'm going to paste it in here, and you can see straight away that our image has been transformed into 3D space. Okay, so let's take a look at our final design. So this is our final page, beautiful 3D. And also we can see that our wave is in place. And this is the content that we added from our layout pack.
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we go live or we release a new video. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.